11. Yes. Beginning at verse number 23, mm -hmm. the Bible informs us that when the Apostle Paul had to regulate their misuse of the Lord's Supper, right. that Paul began to remind them of what he had received from the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. Paul says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Notice Jesus says that when they break the bread, and when as they are partaking of it, they're doing it in his remembrance. Yes. He didn't stop with the bread. But the Bible says after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had sub saying that this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Notice here, Paul says in verse number 26, for as often as ye eat of this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come. Paul says every time you eat of the bread, every time you take up the cup, you're doing it in remembrance of the Lord's death. And for those who have bent their sails unto ritualistic activity, what they're saying when they decide to only do it once a month is that that's the only time that they're going to remember the body and blood of the Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but God has been too good to me for me to just set him aside for one Sunday. God has done so much for me in cleansing me. I'm going to do like the Lord said. I'm going to remember him every first day of the week. Amen. That's when the disciples mm -hmm. came together in order to do just that. Well, there's another ritualistic activity that people have taken part in. And that's putting any and every name on the church building. You've got some folk who say that they serve Jesus. You've got some people who say that they worship God but God's name is not on the building and what I want to show you in Exodus chapter 20 and beginning at verse number 22 that even in the Old Testament All right, these God. folk were only allowed to go worship where God had put his name yes. and if God's name wasn't there then they could worship there watch with me now in Exodus chapter 20 and beginning at verse number 22 uh, the Bible says here and the Lord said unto Moses thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel ye have seen I have talked with you from heaven yes, and ye shall not make uh, with me gods of silver neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold but an altar of earth shall thou make unto me and shalt sacrifice their own thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings thy sheep and thy oxen in all places where I record my name will I come unto thee and I will bless thee God said if you want your worship to be blessed by me then you got to go where I record my name right before Moses left his earth in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 10 in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 10 Moses reminds the people that they can only worship where God put his name in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 10 Moses said but when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about 
so that you dwell in safety. He said, then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name right. to dwell yeah. there. Then Moses is saying, right there shall you come to all that yeah. you bring all that I command you. You shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offerings and of your hand and all your choice vows which you bow unto the Lord once more. And again God has said that you got to go where my name is recorded. Once again we understand that if we're going to worship the way that God wants us to worship, we got to be where God has recorded his name even in the New Testament yes, Matthew chapter 18 yeah. and beginning at verse number 20 Jesus says we're there two or three gathered together in my name hey. there I am in the midst of them yes, once sir. more and again the Bible is showing us the significance of being gathered where the Lord's name is oh, where they are so that say, preacher, we're still gathering in his name, even though we got another name out there on the sign. They're saying that we're still assembling and calling on the name of Jesus, even though they named the church after some mountain. They're saying that they're still worshiping God, even though they named the church after John. They say they're still giving homage to God. God, even though they put Peter's name on the building. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this morning That's that there ain't no name like the name of Jesus. Because the Bible informs us in Ephesians chapter 1. Yeah. And beginning at verse number 19, Ephesians chapter 1. Yeah. And beginning at verse number 19, Paul asked the question, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? He says, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principles and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come ain't no name like the name of Jesus in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12 the Bible once more and again informs us that there ain't no name like Jesus' name. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. He says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is not the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Philippians chapter 2 and beginning at verse number 9. Once more and again confirms the fact that ain't no name like Jesus' name, Philippians chapter 2, and beginning at verse number 9, the Bible says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, and at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and the every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That's the reason by the time you get to Romans chapter 16 and verse number 16 yeah, yeah. when the apostle Paul wanted the children of God to salute one another with the holy kiss. Yeah. By the time Paul gets to the point when he's calling all of God's children together by the time Paul is getting ready to close this letter. He's calling into accountability all of those who have named the name of Jesus. Therefore, Paul says, salute one another with the holy kiss and the churches of Christ salute you. There's power in that name. There's no other name under heaven 
that's given among me and whereby we must be saved. And so when it comes to the place where I 